surface is made out of 70% water, while 30% is land, and 15% is made out of plants. Have you ever stopped to wonder, how do they come to be? Where do they come from? Let's pause the video for a bit and see who are the group members for this video. Naturalist scientist Charles Darwin himself was puzzled by seemingly sudden appearance of angiosperm in the fossil record. In fact, it was the abominable mystery. The earliest plants were probably similar to aquatic algae stone wood, which have more stalks than stems. Hair-like structures called rhizoid instead of roots. They were definitely having distinct male and female reproductive structures. Since the plants were located on the surface of the water in order for them to receive the sunlight, they were never became the dominant marine organisms. But everything changed when plants moved onto the land. With no organisms on the land, the plant dominated the entire world. Madness. This is my world. However, Plant face a few challenges which are water loss and transportation of substances. To combat water loss, plants acquire two new skills and abilities. Let's go to the lab and see. The stomata were evolved to control transpiration and the cuticle to form waterproof layer to reduce water loss. Living on dry land forced plants to gain a transport system since they are no longer can rely on the dissolved substances in water. And this is where the splitting happens between vascular and non-vascular plants. As time passes by, plants grow taller and taller. Take an example of this. This big and tall tree. If they are so tall, they need to support themselves. They need a mechanical support for them. They can't just rely on those flimsy grass like this. They can't rely on these things anymore. They need to come out with a special thing that helps them grow as tall as this tree. Thus, the lignin thickening in the inner cell wall provides support to the plants to grow upright. Well, plants like moss and ferns can reproduce sexually through sperm and eggs. And yes, they have sperm that literally swim through the water. And don't you think that is like very, very weird? However, for dry land plants, they no longer can rely on water. So they change to rely on animals and wind. The ones they're going to get fancy, and pretty will become the angiosperm that we love and know today. And the one that relies on wind will become the gymnosperm of today. So let's dive deep into what is angiosperm and gymnosperm, shall we? What is gymnosperm? Hmm, I know what you're thinking. Non-flowering plants, right? But that's not all about it. Gymnosperm is simply naked seeds. While their seeds are unprotected, by a cup layer, instead they are exposed. Gymnosperm can be classified into four groups Psychotrophita, Gymnophita, Caliprophita, and Metrophita. For Psychotrophita, there is a defining characteristic which is that their leaves are sharp and little thick and has neurotoxin and carcinogenic compound. This is the precise reason why Psychotrophita can cause toxicity to pets that eat them. For Gymnophita, as this species, as you can see, are very pretty. They are leaf are gorgeous and this is its evolutionary advantage. The only reason it didn't go extinct is because 
The Japanese and Chinese cultivated it for gardens and temples. It is also popular for the bonsai industry. So now, let's look at Nidophyta. They are quite different from the other gymnosperms. This is mainly because they are adapted to the dry conditions. Moreover, they also produce nectar to attract the insects. They are also very common to treat hay fever, sinus headache, and asthma. Their medicinal properties have been known for at least 5,000 years, which is really amazing. They are the most well-known gymnosperms as they are the largest and most common among the living gymnosperms. The most common conifers are evergreen that has adapted to cool and dry regions such as Tegia region. They have special characteristics such as thick bark to protect against the cold, cone shape to cope with heavy snowfall, and fine cones to protect the seeds during the harsh winter. Please look at this. This is Araucaria columnaris, which is actually a conifer. But we can find it at Buki Expo at UPM. So this means that conifers are not only adapted to dry and cold environments, however, they are also adapted to tropical countries like Malaysia here. So now let's go and do a very, very scientific experiment, shall we? So the result of my experiment is that angiosperm tastes amazing and most of our food is made out of angiosperm. Okay, okay, now what is angiosperm and why most of our food is made from them? Angiosperms are plants that flowers and bear seeds in fruits. The part that we eat is the fruit part just like corn, rice, paddy, and so much more. They are the largest and most diverse group in Kingdom Plantain. In fact, they dominate the earth's surface and vegetation in more environments than any other groups of plants. Also, angiosperms play a vitally important part in our economy as well. Serving has pharmaceutical, fiber, timber, ornamental plants, and other industry as well. Come on, let's see what the angiosperms are. See this. This tree can be found also in Bukit Expo UPM. This is Plomeria obtusa. So, what is angiosperm? As you can see, angiosperm just basically means plants with flowers. As you can see, they are flowering plants and that's it to it. Honestly, that's it. But let's go a little deeper as to what makes angiosperm so special and different, shall we? The basic angiosperm body has three parts. Roots, stems and leaves. The roots anchor a plant, absorb water and minerals and provide storage area for food. Most UD cotyledons produce tap roots. For example, durian, carrot and dandelions. Wow! Most smaller cotyledons produce fibrous fruit, for example, corn, grasses, and coconut. While the stem is an area axis of the plant that bears leaves and flowers, and conduct waters and minerals from roots to all parts of the plants. Let's continue to the basic angiosperm leaf, which is composed of a leaf base, two stipules, a petiole, and a blad. Actually, there are some leaf tissues that are modified for storage, protection against predation or climatic change or trapping and digesting insect prey. Cactus are one of those extraordinary plants that have spines as their wholly transformed leaves. So guys, what are the contrasts between angiosperm and gymnosperm? The most important thing is flowers. Flowers for angiosperms and no flowers for gymnosperms. Angiosperms have their ovules enclosed, while gymnosperms have their ovules naked. Angiosperms uses wind, water, animals and insects as their pollinating agents, 
while gymnosperms only uses wing. Double fertilization occurs in angiosperms but not in gymnosperms. And angiosperms has fruit while gymnosperms does not. So these are the, all the differences between angiosperms and gymnosperms. So, so we hope you guys enjoy this video. Bye-bye!